Hi, this video describes the Pebble PASAT, the PASAT, or the Paste Audio Serial Edition task. Um, here's a picture of the Pebble implementation. This is what the screen looks like when you're doing it. And the idea is you hear a series of numbers um, and you have to, as a running um, task, add up the previous two numbers and make a response. So the Passat has been used, has been first developed in the 70s, and it was sort of developed because you can eat, um, as an audio auditory serial task, because you could put it on a tape recorder and take it out um, to a patient's house or something and um, give a series of numbers in an auditory format and they could make responses. Um, there are both auditory and um, visual versions or and auditory visual versions and you can use either one with Pebble. But they're all sort of called the Passat. One of the best papers on the Passat um, in recent years was by Tom Bow, and who describes a lot of the different ways it's been used in the past and different variations on it and what it's good for. And it turns out it has, first of all, there's he also has some cautions about using it. Um, so what it's good for, it's it was used initially for traumatic brain injury, but it's also um, been picked up by, I think, the um, National Muscular Sclerosis Society. Uh, and they've identified it as one of the clinical study measures that is useful for, M for MS. Um, uh, Tombo notes that it has very good sensitivity um, and, and it's reliable, however, there are learning effects. People get better over time, and um, the MS uh, recommendations recommend giving it a few times for practice before you get a baseline um, so that people can, can improve over time. Um, there, it, it also, it's also noted that this is, um, it's sensitive but not very specific, so it's, it's, um, that means a lot of different um, maybe brain injuries or or different um, different treatments can impact this. So sometimes it's used for more general cognitive function. Um, if you search for Pebble Passat, you see a lot of hits, but most of these aren't using the Pebble version, which is one of the reasons why I implemented it. Um, a lot of people have been using other versions of the Passat along with Pebble. And so this should give an opportunity to use it together with other Pebble tasks. Um, maybe some of these used it. I can't quite tell in all of these cases. Um, but it's a pr fairly commonly used task out there in clinical settings for, and, in, for, and in laboratory settings to assess sort of general cognitive function. Um, and, and, it, and it can be sensitive to um, how it can change with response to fa maybe fatigue, but also clinical um, different clinical conditions. So um, if you uh, download the Pebble system um, and run it, you'll get a screen sort of like this and the Passat will be, is available under battery under PASAT. <coughs> and to start, let's uh, talk about some of the parameter settings that you can use to adjust or change things. So initially, um, what it what it will do is always give a number that's between the the answer is always between um, I guess two and um, twenty. Uh, so these are things you can change. Um, some of the versions I've seen um, other people use have each of the numbers actually be between um, one and nine, so it'd be a single digit number. So you can set you know the 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 max value of any added number to add to be uh, nine, which will restrict it to just single digit numbers. And um, you can, sometimes the max sum, the max number will be something like 14 or 15. Um, by default, that's gonna be 20. I'll set this back to 20 and 18. But you can, um, you know, mimic different versions of the Passat by changing these two things. Um, the ISI is another thing that gets manipulated a lot. Um, and one thing to be, I think 3000 is one of the most standard um, sort of ISIs or inner 
stimulus intervals, how long between each um, number. But um, people have tried faster, and it gets much more difficult. People have a hard time keeping up. You can get sl go slower, especially if you're trying to give this to children or something like that. Um, <coughs> the way it works is it will do um, a, a bunch of rounds in a row. Um, that The number of rounds is controlled by this. By default, there's two rounds, but you can adjust that. Um, and there are um, tr 20 trials per round. So each round takes about a minute. 20 trials by 3,000 milliseconds per trial will give you about a minute um, for each round. So you can track it over time. And you can also turn on and off whether you want audio or visual here. And finally, there's some practice trials that are given at a slightly slower rate than this. I think the practice trials are about maybe... I think they're every five seconds, but um, I don't remember for sure. <coughs> so these are some of the um, things you can adjust to make it suitable for whatever um, whatever you want to do in the lab. So I'll save this, and let's see if we run this. Uh, here's the instructions, and then I guess I already used that subject code so we can add a new session. It'll give, okay, 0 and 14, we click on the 14. 14 and 6 would give 20. 6 and 8, we have so on. I can't really do this and talk at the same time, so I'm mostly guessing here. Um, so this should be 10 trials, and you can see that. It's keeping track of the number of trials here. And I have three seconds. If I don't make a response, um, it'll say incorrect. And in fact, the most common error type uh, reported by Tombow across a lot of different implementations is failure to make a response. Um, people just don't respond um, if they don't, uh, they don't respond at all rather than making a specific types of errors. Um, and that should be, that should get us to the first break. This is a single round, um, task. So, um, just looking at the parameters, I guess I have one round. Um, I said, don't do practice. By default, you'll have 10 practice trials to begin with, and I've turned that off. And so um, we just had a single round of 20 trials. Um, so at the end of this, uh, you get a data file. And we'll open up the data file by selecting data and hit open edit. And we just ran probably subject 41. Um, this is just run. And so. This, I'm going to just delete this uh, because I had, because I'd reused the subject code, it kind of appended to the end. So there's a bunch of columns here, and the columns uh, should be labeled if it's in a new file, but we have a subject number. This is a block code. This is a trial and a block trial. So this one keeps incrementing. This one resets every block. This tells you the ISI. This tells you the previous number and the current number, and those added together should be the correct answer. This tells you the answer that was given, and here's a case where you missed. And then there's a few other codings, like here, is it correct? Is I think there's another one here that it's a doublet. Did you get the previous trial correct? That's current trial, previous trial. This is a doublet, meaning you got two correct in a row. Um, here's another counter. Here's a total number of um, correct trials across the block. This is the absolute time you know, s um, in a millisecond timer that the trial started at. And so you can see it's, al it's almost exactly three seconds between every consecutive trial. Sometimes it's one or two milliseconds off from that. And here is the response time uh, for making a response. And you can see that when no response was made, it was 3,000 or sometimes 3,001 milliseconds. 
Um, so that's the basic data format. And at the end, you also get a report file that will first report out all of the parameters being set. And then, um, and that's, I guess what this is, it, it kind of appended two together. But, but, and then it will give us details about the performance. And so um, if we have multiple rounds, it will tell us each round, how many we did, how many I got correct, and how many doublets. Um, so one thing that some, um, some researchers have noted is that if this goes too fast, what people do is they skip every other item. And um, when they, so they skip every other item, and so they get every other one correct. And so measuring doublets will sort of prevent them from counting for that particular strategy. Um, so that's the report file that comes out. Um, you can also, uh, if you want to change the, the text, change instructions or debriefing, you can uh, select that and hit translate test. And I'll open this up and you can see you can change the text here from different headers and footers and the debriefing and the instructions. And this, you can just edit this here um, if you want to change it. And if you want to translate it to new language, you'd have to um, change the language here and save it. I will uh, not save it. But if you were to want to translate it, um, you also may want to change, if you want to use the audio version, you'd want to change the audio files. And so we can um, look in the folder. There is an audio subfolder. And these are n numerals that I've um, I found on uh, some, what is it, freesound.org. And they're all Creative Commons licensed. And these give you numbers between uh, 1 and 20. And if you were translating this to a new language, you'd want to re-record these um, in your own uh, in your own language. All right, so that is the Pebble Passat. It has a lot of different ways of, of adjusting it, making it longer, making it more difficult, making it faster, and changing the numbers um, in the ways that make uh, that that allow you to tweak it to the specific population you're using. Uh, one thing to note, if we let's look at the audio version, and just so you can hear it. So, so I'll run this. So um, this would would often be used by directly by a subject on a computer, and um, and so, so they would hear this, and they would be making responses by clicking. But the original version really didn't have um, a mouse click as a response. And so what you might choose to do instead is uh, just have, I'll, let's see, I'll close this, just have the um, subject do the audio part, and an experiment or a clinician would operate the computer and click on the numbers that they say. Uh, there is that that you know they there are problems there because you could if you're doing that you could be missing the timing. Um, they might say it in time, but you don't click it in time, and so you so you miss something that that you think they should have actually recorded. So that's just one thing that um, uh, you can do, but um, it adds more. Uh, complexity. So I don't. I'm not sure how all the different versions of the Passat that are computerized implement it. Um, probably some of them use schemes like this, and others uh, might do auditory responses, but require human coding of whether they got it correct, and things like that. Um, all right. Well, that is the Passat in Pebble, and you can download Pebble with this at pebble.sourceforge.net.